Hello, hello, you beautiful souls. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Michelle. We talk all things life, love, spirituality, love, attraction, and all of that juicy goodness. We are here for our weekly energy reading. We are getting closer to Christmas, which is so exciting, the holiday season. Whether you celebrate Hanukkah or Christmas or New Year's, um, it's just a, a warm and fuzzy time of year. So let's see what messages we need to hear. We are going to call on our guides, Archangel Michael, Archangel Metatron. Please open sacred space. Please only allow the highest and whitest light messages to come through. Bless me. Bless my cards. Bless my viewers. Let's see what the energy is for this week. I know I have gone through another little ego. I don't know if it matters what we call it, but um, whether it's an ego death or just a ego degradation degradation I think that's the right term for it um, but it's just kind of like a you just have a new awareness about yourself and why you used to do the things that you used to do and it's almost like it ew I can't believe I did that and you just become better and you learn from it and you're just more awake and aware of um the illusion that your traumas have created within you. So if you have some sort of abuse in your childhood or people pleasing or um, abandoning yourself for others, you, you become more aware of it. And you're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I was always so quick to text people back and was fearing if I didn't, that they wouldn't love me. And then you just stop doing it. And that's what these small little delayering um, unfolding, kind of like letting go more of that illusion of that personality or that persona that felt like you needed to do all of these things to be loved. It's like, that's kind of all falling away, which is like what an ego death is, but it happens in phases. So I just got guided to use my money deck first. If you did not know, I created a money deck. It's called messages from money. There's, I believe 70 cards and I channeled this deck in a way where I wanted people to be able to, to go to the cards, to be able to see like, what's their hold up? Like, why is money not flowing in their life? Or what do they need to learn about money? How can they build their relationship with it? So um, I had so much fun creating it because I've loved learning. I, a big lesson for me is money in my life. Um, you know, I feel like I have relationships that are so fulfilling and I've learned my lessons on how to build and strengthen relationships. I know how to talk to people. I know how to nurture people. I have no problem opening up my heart and giving so much love where other people might get the money game down, but then they struggle with relationships. So for me, I don't struggle with relationships. I struggle with money and knowing my worth and knowing what I deserve and you know, not undercharging myself and just all the different ways that we can sabotage our own abundance. So that's why I created this deck because it's happening in my life. And I want to help other people who might be going through that too. So um, let's ask money for some messages today. All right. Let's get some jumpers. Honey, what do you want to tell us? Thank you. Please don't stop looking at me. So when we stop looking at our bank account, when we stop appreciating, and I also see this as I, when I wrote this card, I didn't think about this, but right now I'm getting the message that this is us not looking at what we already have. Like you're not looking and appreciating that all you've created for yourself. And also huge, huge, huge point Think about all the times where you manifested a ton of abundance in the past, and maybe now it's not in your bank account anymore because you put it back out into the world in whatever way, whether it's for clothing, for travel, for food, for bills, there are all ways that you're nurturing yourself, right? That just because that money's still not in your account and maybe you didn't grow it further, that doesn't mean that you're a bad person. So don't stop looking at what you already created. It's still good. It's still vibrant. It's still worthy of being celebrated because you did it. You mastered it. You figured it out. And if it's not flooding in right now, that's okay. There's more coming, but maybe there's another lesson to learn. So the next time it comes in, maybe you'll use it differently. 
maybe you will keep it more for yourself and nurture yourself and not be so quick to spend it. Um, so money is always trying to tell us that we need to appreciate what we have and what we've already created. First message. So just because the money's not in the account right now doesn't mean that when you manifested it before that it's not worthy of celebrating. Get another jumper. If we don't get a jumper, then I'll teach others about energy, about my energy. So money wants us to learn about how it works. And we can only learn about how it works from the people that have done it before us and the people that can tap into that energy that money holds. Totally getting like a shooting pain on my right side. Um, right side is masculine energy, stomach area. Whew, that hurts. Hopefully it's just like a little air pocket moving around. Yeah, okay, it's gone. <laughs> But my body does make me feel, or my guides make me feel things in my body for a certain reason. So masculine energy, maybe you are needing to learn about the energy of money, that it's not so hard to receive. We don't have to work so hard to get it. Learning about this energy, and that's, I'm, per, I'm glad that my stomach just hurt for a second, because that really is an indicator of the message that money's trying to tell us right now, is that most masculine energies, most men think that they have to work really hard for abundance, and they struggle to settle into the feminine energy of doing less and receiving more. So the message that came with this card is you can do less and receive more. When you take naps, when you go on vacations, when you nurture your soul, you get massages, you go for walks, guaranteed money comes in or ideas come in to make money after you do those things. So it's like when you settle the body down and rest it, the vibration completely gets neutral and then you can allow more in. Instead of when you're working and grinding so hard, your energy is restricted and tight. Nothing can flow to you because you're so your hand, your fist is closed. So when you're relaxed and when you're neutral, you are allowing things can flow through you. So that's the second message. Don't forget to appreciate all that you do have. And remember you do less and receive more. Let's get one more. Actually, I'm being called to shuffle again. going to cut the deck. I arrive faster when you love yourself. <laughs> Self-love is the answer to everything, everything in life. If you love yourself, it arrives. If you love yourself, your partner arrives. If you love yourself, the job arrives. It's when you consider yourself worthy. So our ultimate goal is self-love. How can we fully step into our light, into our energy and embrace our wounds Embrace our pain and see how it shaped us into who we are. Okay, make a magic now. Um, keep cutting. Ooh, one flipped. What do we got here? It's an emotional time. Be gentle with yourself. Okay, so this week, someone might be going through something. So... When, you ha when you're having an emotional time, it means you're in a struggle, right? You're kind of like either in the unknown or somebody breaks up with you. Maybe money's not flowing and you're panicked. Be gentle with yourself. Another message to love yourself. When you're being gentle, you are literally taking that younger self, your younger you, your 10-year-old version of you. You're hugging them close. You're tucking them underneath a blanket, giving them a good nap, cooking them yummy food. So this week, I need you all to do things to nurture yourself, okay? Follow the signs. <laughs> I heard this song today when I was drying my hair. Hold the line. This means something's coming, so hold the line. The signs are showing you that it's coming. And then we have make the change. You will feel amazing. So if there's this little like niggle inside of you and you're just like, I feel like I need to do something or I know what I need to do, but I'm scared to do it. 
when you make the change, you're going to feel so stinking good. You're going to be like, yes, I'm so proud of myself. I chose myself. I decided to do this thing that I was scared to do. Or maybe I finally looked at my bank account and I made a plan to save money or I'm learning about money more. Maybe I'm reading books about it. One of my favorite books ever is called Creating Money. Creating Money. It's a purple book. Um, highly recommend it. Go buy it, read it, pull pages from it, get inspiration. It changes your perspective on how money really works and how your external reality does not determine whether you get money or not. So it's not your physical output that calls in more money. It's not the amount that you, um, it's not the amount of work that you're doing and the amount of connections that you're building or the amount of like literally the physical labor that you're doing. It's more of how are you thinking and feeling while you're doing those things? Do you know that money's already in your account and you're just doing this for fun now? That's the energy you want to get into. I talked in two videos this week about, they're coming out this week about the gap. So here's who you are and here's who, here's the person that you want to be who has all the things that you want, right? But there's a gap there. You have to close that gap and you have to become that person now. And then those things will then drop into this reality. Instead of you having to find this new reality, you stay where you are and you just change internally how you're thinking, feeling, and being. And then all of those things find their way to you, okay? This happened to me last night, actually this morning. I was, um, last night I was envisioning a man taking care of me and doing things for me. And then this morning, my neighbor, I just met him and he offered to give me his brand new Jeep Wrangler soft top, which costs like probably $2,900, $3,000. He just randomly offered it to me. But all last night, I became the woman who had a man doing things for her. So it's wild how when we kind of put ourselves in the energy to be receiving, to be that person, the universe then brings you people to support that. And that's the most beautiful piece for me is when, how quickly the universe aligns with who you're being. That was a fun little poppy one. Step into the new you. Yes. Wow. Okay. That'll be our last for Micah Magic. And then we'll do some angel cards. <laughs> Your angels are asking you to use them. Okay. <laughs> I hear you angels. Set energetic boundaries. This is learning about cleansing your energy. I created a course on my website. It's called Understanding Energy and How to Cleanse Properly. Highly recommend it. Go take it. It will literally give you the tools you need to understand maybe why your vibration is low and maybe why you don't feel so good or why you always are hanging out with a certain person and you leave them feeling a certain way. This course is going to teach you how to not experience that, to be that strong person who can be in any environment and share your light instead of always having to protect it. Breakdown that builds character. This is big changes in your life. So maybe this week you're going to be contemplating some changes that you want, or maybe there is going to be some sort of, um, quick little shift. I, it's, I feel like it's like a quick, sorry, my guide just said, get a charm. Um, like a quick change. Like you meet somebody new or you start talking to somebody differently or, um, a new job opportunity shows up. Okay. So we have the peace sign gathering more peace in your life. So we have the peace. There's another one that I dropped. I could feel what it was like, but the peace energy. So this breakdown is going to bring you more peace. Um, it's kind of like when you've been wanting to connect with somebody, or if you've been wanting to find like an answer to a problem in your life, you're like, I finally got it. I can sleep at night now. I feel better. I feel more calm. <laughs> Maybe that's the piece that you were looking for. Maybe you're going to go through all this breakdown this week and then boom, the money drops in. The opportunity unfolds. So hold the line. The signs are going to show you that that's going to happen. And then when you get that money, you're going to share it. You're going to be so discerning about what you do with it. And that's something that money always tries to teach us is that we have to be open to not sharing it with people who won't value it or won't value the gesture. So don't just quickly give your money away because money is an energy, right? 
You want to make sure you're giving it with the right intention. And you want to make sure you're giving it to the right people who are open to receiving it. And it arrives faster when you love yourself. So when you're maybe calling in this windfall of money, like, are you really loving yourself? Are you taking care of yourself? Are you stepping into the new you? Are you making the changes? If there is an emotional thing going on, are you being gentle with yourself? Which this reading feels a little bit personal for me <laughs> because I literally just went through an emotional time of remembering an old trauma. I've been getting so many signs. People are sending me hearts from the weirdest situation. Somebody was on an airplane and they saw a pond that was the shape of a heart. My cousin's a dentist and she had, I think a kid come in with like old fillings from another dentist who does the silver fillings. And the filling was in literally a shape of a heart. And she sent me two. She's been a dentist for 20 years, has never seen a heart shaped filling. She saw two yesterday. So it's like, follow the signs. The signs are showing up. And then it says, hold the line because you've been going through that breakdown that builds the character. So hold the line. Your windfall is coming and be sure to set energetic boundaries when you get it, because you want to make sure that you're not giving your energy away. You don't want to give your ideas away. You, you want to tune into what's really coming in for you, what's really coming in for somebody else. And then where are you abandoning yourself to be loved by somebody? I feel like that's a message for somebody out there that sometimes you're so quick to give your energy and your love and your money to people, but you're doing it from a wounded space because of trauma. Like, oh, if I do this and this person will like me more, and then you're left without the thing. And you're like, oh, I just tried to manifest this thing for months and I finally got it. And then I just gave it away. So be mindful about who you're going to share your manifestation with. Okay, let's get some tarot. I haven't used this deck in a while. This is the Rider Waite tarot. Um, it's the original tarot. Fun fact, I believe the tarot was created and used back during the Egyptian times where um, they wanted to get messages from their higher power. So they created the tarot. Isn't that cool? I didn't know that. And I should know that. Okay, two of wands. This is somebody deciding. They have the world at their fingertips and they're deciding between two options. Do I stay or do I go? Do I stay or do I go? And I just randomly put that on, hold the line. The answer will come. Okay, and then we have judgment. It's like the angels have arrived. They are singing the song and finally bringing the judgment that somebody needs. It's like you're fine. It's almost like the justice card in a way where everybody's um, going to have to face the thing, the karma that they've put out there. So maybe somebody's hurt you in the past and you're sitting around thinking about um, how they've hurt you, or maybe you're thinking negative thoughts. You don't want to do that. When you think a negative thought, it moves through your body and it's passing through your system and then going to somebody else. So you're hurting yourself and you're hurting the other person, which we don't want to do that. Why would we want to hurt them or us? Even if they have caused us pain in some way, it was a lesson. They were showing you that you attracted that situation for healing and they'll get their judgment. They'll have to face that light. They'll have to face the things that they've done. Um, they have to go to bed with themselves every single night. So I think that's judgment enough, you know, but you just get to appreciate that your side of the street is clean and you've done everything you needed to do to clean up that energy. And if you did do something wrong and you're scared that you're going to be the one to face the judgment, take a deep breath right now and know that when you do good, you're canceling out the negative. Okay. When you've done negative things in the past, that was just a part of you. It's kind of like before your ego death, you were in a costume, you weren't aware and now you're aware. So now you can forgive that version of you that's no longer you and know that that past doesn't affect your future because it's not in your system anymore. You've let it go. And if you haven't let it go, it's time to let it go. Let's get one more card. We had one flip, the Hierophant, <laughs> spiritual teacher, a higher perspective. I just heard because of the judgment, you are now seeing yourself in a higher light. You're loving yourself more. 
you're finding more peace in your life because you're realizing that you don't need to punish yourself for all the things that you've done. That is just the mind that wants to go to, okay, this is a really good message. Everybody listen up right now. Your mind knows your weak spots, right? So, so say you did something in the past, maybe you um, lied to somebody, maybe you cheated, maybe you stole something from somebody. I don't know. It could be something as simple as stealing an idea, you know? Um, say you've done that. You opened up that karma loop, right? It's a negative karmic loop. Eventually that has, that loop has to get closed. But what the mind does is the mind knows your ego knows that you feel bad about doing that. So anytime you have something amazing happening to you, guess what your mind's going to do? Your mind's going to say, wait, they're, they're losing the need for us. We need to control reality. We need to make sure that they don't, you know, elevate and become enlightened because then they won't need me anymore. So the mind starts to freak out when we get successful on our enlightening journey, when we become more in our heart and we're, we don't really need the mind anymore because we're living from soul. Well, the mind freaks out and it wants to pull you back up into the mind. The way it pulls you back up is it searches in that library in your psyche for the events that you feel bad about. And then it starts to make you think of them. It brings you thoughts about those events. And then all of a sudden, you're unconsciously thinking these thoughts going, oh no, is my past going to repeat itself? I'm a horrible person. I shouldn't have done that. And you start to think about all of these things, but the mind just totally tricked you. You were just having a really good day. You were just feeling so good in your self-love, living from soul. And the mind just went down and pulled you out of your heart. So your job this week is to be super, super aware that you're the hierophant. You are always going to be looking for how the mind is going to create an illusion to keep you out of your heart. You deserve to live from your heart. You deserve love. You deserve to give yourself love. So when you're not giving yourself that love, you know that you're in the mind and it's creating an illusion and it's telling you all of these false stories and you have to be aware of it and get back into the heart. And the way I like to get back into the heart is either gratitude I'll quickly stop thinking what I'm thinking and I'll say, no, I've come so far. I love myself. Look at what I've accomplished in my life. Look at all the people that I've helped. And it kind of wakes you up. And I just got a message to share this uh, on, I think it was the 14th, December 14th. I did a two hour session with a woman and her name is Debbie and she does one-on-one -on -one games. So I'm sure you guys heard me talk about the all game awareness, love and light. And it's almost like um, a spiritual workout. So it is a board game and each section of the board is a path and each path is a chakra system and each chakra has a certain name to it. Like the root chakra is the security path and then the crown chakra is the oneness path and you roll a dice, you roll the die, you pick a little characters, little things that they're almost like little charms. And you play this game with a group of people, but Debbie, the instructor, there's only, I think less than 30 instructors all over the U S. So it's a very rare game. You can't just pick up the game and start playing it. Somebody has to facilitate it. So here I am on a two hour phone call playing the game. We weren't in person. So she does do a phone call. So I'm going to offer that to all of you. If you want to play this game, it is so fun. It's just you and the universe and you're rolling the dice. Your little figurines are being moved and you're landing on certain spots and the universe is talking back to you. It's telling you what you need to work on, or it's telling you that you're doing amazing and that money's coming and everything's good. It's direct communication and it's two hours of just pure fun with a board game about the universe. And Debbie is just facilitating it on the call. Like she's rolling the dice for you and doing all that. And I'm sure she would be open to doing Zoom if any of you guys wanted to do that. Um, but I'm gonna leave a link here for you guys to go check out her intro video. She made a video a while back. Um, so excuse it if it's not like 2023 kind of prepped and ready, but it's the basics of the games. And then, then if you feel called, she has her email listed in that video and you can just email her. Um, but I highly recommend it. I've been playing this game for over a year and a half now. And I played the game on the 14th and I played for two hours and every move of the game, the game was reflecting back to me that I'm enough. 
I need, I need to love myself more. And at one point in the game, it had me draw how abundance shows up in my life. It was something like you attract abundance effortlessly. Tell us, draw a picture of how this happens in your life. So on the phone call, I was literally drawing on a piece of paper and I was showing that like all of my YouTube community always sends me such positive comments. Um, my clients always give me the best feedback. Everywhere I go, I create such lovely experiences with strangers. And I just felt so abundant with people. That was my first response was, how does abundance show up in my life? My first response was love through people. Most people would think of money, like how is money showing up in your life? But I ended up drawing how much love I get from all of you and just the people in my world. And if I were to die today, I would be so incredibly just fulfilled knowing that I've helped people and they've helped me more than I could ever could have ever dreamt of. And my daughter's name, you know, for her to pass away in 2012 and to hear the amount of people that have said her name since then, like that's incredible. And that's because I didn't stop talking about it. And I walked through my fear and I continue to show up and share and to teach. And that's what I saw as abundance in my own life. And the game showed me that. The game literally made me do something that helped me love myself more. And I was like on the phone with her crying. I was like, I'm so loved. I'm like, I haven't been appreciating it. Like I do enough. I don't need to do more because my ego, my mind creates this illusion that I'm not good enough. So if you're interested in playing the all game, I highly recommend it. Go click that link. I'll have stuff in the description box below. Debbie is an amazing facilitator. She's kind, she's sweet, she's loving. And you just have to be willing to face, you know, whatever comes out in the game. It could say that, um, I don't know, it just shows you the parts of you that are so lovely about you. So you have to be willing to accept love <laughs> is what I was going to say is like, you have to just be willing to receive all the good that you are. And it's the game reflecting it back to you. I always say it's like Jumanji. You're like immersed in the game because your life will reflect what's happening in the game and vice versa. So that's why I love to play. It's like a check-in each month to be like, all right, where am I at in my life? What do I need to hear universe? It's like getting a reading from somebody, but you're playing a board game. Um, but I felt called to share that because the Hierophant is that higher perspective. It's being able to see it from the game perspective of, all right, I'm here to play this game. How can I not let my mind keep pulling me out of my heart? When I came out of that game, I felt so much love. I literally was loving myself unconditionally. I was so proud of the woman that I am. I wasn't listening to anything that I've done in the past that I'm not proud of or the people that have hurt me. I, I had no anger towards them. I just was fully in my heart. And what the ego will do is a day after that event, it'll try to pull me back up into the mind to make me second guess myself again or to make me feel bad about my past decisions. It looks for that library of all it has. It only has a library of the past, right? Right. So it can only find an event that already happened and it's going to make you rethink that. So then it puts you back into a mind loop. And now it's one because it got you out of the heart and it got you out of soul. So our, our whole path in life is the battle between the mind and the heart. And how can we stay in the heart and get away from the mind and all the illusion that it creates because it keeps us in fear. And then we can't take action and do what we love because we're living in our mind. So long story short, that game is phenomenal. It's like a spiritual workout. You get to check in and receive so much love. Eventually, I'm going to become a facilitator as well. So you guys can play with me. Um, so I know that's next for me. It's, it's just, I know that I should do it because I love the game and I cannot wait to play it every single month. Okay, final two messages. Heart chakra. <laughs> we were just talking about being in the heart. Love is in the heart of the matter. Your heart is the center within your physical being attuned most to love. It's safe for you to love and be loved with an open heart as we stand by with perfect, per, perfect protection and guidance. So this is saying, if you're wondering if it's safe to open your heart, it is. It can be hard to open your heart once you've experienced heartache and pain. I know for me, when I lost my daughter, I didn't want to get close to people. I didn't want to touch it with a 10 foot pole because if you get close to love, 
what happens? There's a risk you'll lose it again. And I did not ever want to, I still don't ever want to experience that again to get to feel that unconditional love and then have it kind of like so-called taken away from you. And with a child, it's innate. It's like, it wasn't like I built a connection with my daughter. It was innate. It's she's a part of me. And I lost, you know, I don't want to say I lost it because I didn't, but I don't, it was, it was taken in some sort of way. And for me, my nervous system is scared to experience that again, because I'm afraid I'm going to get hurt again. Oh, and then we have shower of abundance to heal your financial situation. First, give, give us your worries concerning money. We will guide you in order to show you how to create and accept abundance. As we work together, your financial situation will heal as fast as you'll allow. I just posted something on my community page and on Instagram about calling in divine infinite supply. I call on you to provide for me. I know you'll always show up for me. And you're saying it out loud. You're calling your angels in to take care of it. I don't know where the money is going to come from. I don't know where the business is going to come from. I don't know where the clients are going to come from. I don't know how I'm going to pay my rent next month, but I know that I'll be safe when I call on my angels and infinite supply and the universe and source, whatever you want to call it. So they're saying a shower of abundance. You're getting a windfall of money and shower of abundance. So this week looks pretty awesome. And it almost looks like when you stay in your heart, you follow your joy, you do what you love. That's when this is all going to show up. You're not stuck in the mind thinking that you're not worthy of it. You've gotten out of ego and you know that you're in your heart. And the more you share the love, you, the more you receive it. This was so good. I'm sending you all so much love. Don't forget that peace charm. You are deserving of having peace in your life and it starts with you creating it yourself. All right, like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in our midweek reading. All right, peace out.